Howdy folks, Steampunk Desperado here. This week I have a brief video on one of my favorite internet causes, Project Gutenberg. This is a nonprofit that was founded in 1971 by American computer pioneer Michael S. Hart. He is credited with being the inventor of the ebook. He conceived the idea of an online library that would have books available for download for free. 50 plus years later, his website, Gutenberg.org, has well over 50,000 books in the public domain available for free download. It is a fantastic resource for anyone who loves books, but especially for steampunks. As I was saying, Michael Hart was one of the pioneers of the computing industry and one of the early adopters of the internet. The story goes that on July 4th, somebody handed him a copy of the Declaration of Independence and he said, I want everyone to have this, but he realized he couldn't do that. It just wasn't practical, even back then. So instead, he typed it in and made it available for download. This was the beginning of Project Gutenberg, also known as Gutenberg.org. It was named, of course, after Johannes Gutenberg, the German inventor of movable type printing. And he, of course, revolutionized the publishing industry, causing vast political changes in Europe and the West, including the Protestant Reformation, because now everybody could afford to have their own copy of the Bible. They didn't depend upon the priest to give them the explanation of what it all meant. Gutenberg's mission statement is this. Encourage the creation and distribution of ebooks, help break down the bars of ignorance and illiteracy, and give as many ebooks to as many people as possible. Sadly, Michael S. Hart is no longer with us. He died of a heart attack at the age of 64. A lot like his fellow visionary Nikola Tesla, he was never really concerned with money. He was always wanting to do as much good as possible and and so he didn't have a lot available for health care for example I mean Wikipedia mentions him using home remedies so maybe this is why he succumbed to a heart attack at an unfortunately young age anyway as I alluded to in my introduction Gutenberg.org is a nirvana for steampunk since we love fiction from the bygone eras it has all the great British authors, such as H.G. Wells, Richard Kipling, uh, Mary Shelley, Charles Dickens, Lewis Carroll, Robert Louis Stevenson, Arthur Conan Doyle, who also wrote science fiction. Recently, his works came into the public domain, so they're on Gutenberg, so you can get Sherlock Holmes. There are, of course, other authors, such as Jules Verne, in both English and the original French, and great American authors, such as Edgar Rice Burroughs, Robert E. Howard, Mark Twain, who appears in a lot of steampunk alternate histories, Herman Melville, Washington Irving, L. Frank Baum, the creator of The Wizard of Oz, and so on and so on and so on. Gutenberg books are an indispensable part of my library. I have around 72 books that I downloaded from them. Of them, four are for reference. These were like the Bible, the Quran the Bhagavad Gita, and so forth. I've read over 50 of, of the remaining 68 books. And the way I do that is because I have an ebook reader called FB Reader on my phone, and I'm able to listen to these books while I'm commuting, while I'm doing yard work, while I'm doing chores, etc. It's a robot voice. <laughs> a lot of people find it very off-putting, but you get used to it. And it's really much better than having to sit down and read stuff. I get through books I would have never read if I had to make the time to sit down with a physical book. For example, classics such as Moby Dick, Don Quixote, and Victor Hugo's Les Miserables, which I very recently finished. These are long books. <laughs> Some parts are a little bit slow, <laughs> so I would not have probably gotten through them, but it's important to read the classics, especially if you're a writer, because you need to know where all these various tropes came from. If somebody's talking about uh, Jean Valjean running from the Inspector Javert, you know what it's about because you've read the book. 
As far as nonfiction, they've got a lot of great stuff, including Gibbons' The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. And that was another one. I downloaded it. It was all six volumes in one ebook and went through them all. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So much to learn about the Romans that I hadn't known. And of course, their successors, the Byzantines, which we Americans know very little about. There's also public domain images available. I got this idea when I was doing a video on dragons, and I didn't have as much as I wanted on Wikipedia's Creative Commons to use, and I thought, why not Gutenberg? Some of the books have images, and indeed I found a couple great books about dragons in China, and of course the illustrations are public domain, so I could use them. There are obscure works on Gutenberg that I would not have read otherwise. For example, when I was in high school literature class, my teacher used to say that the very first novel was called Pamela. It was written by Samuel Richardson. And I, of course, being a little bit ornery, I'd say, how do you know it was the first one? How do you know nobody wrote anything before that? And she said, it just is. I read it. It was not very good. It was one of these dumb romantic novels about a woman in trouble. And this guy's trying to take her virtue and all this, and she resists him, and blah, blah, blah. But it was, it was actually funny, because it was so melodramatic. But I got to read it. There are books with historical significance that I've read because of their historical significance. One was Ignatius Donnelly's Atlantis, the Antediluvian World. He was this eclectic researcher who got this idea that Atlantis was real and it influenced human history because that's why the Mayans are similar to the Egyptians, for example. And he got this whole Atlantis craze kicked off in the 1800s. So he definitely influenced our culture. And I did this as part of research for a book I'm writing, which involves Atlantis in a steampunk setting. Another one was Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. Now, I know the word Uncle Tom has bad connotations now in the black community, but seriously, the book was a masterful piece of anti-slavery propaganda. It really was very moving. And, you know, Uncle Tom was very passive, I understand. <laughs> but it really showcases the evils of slavery. And although being rather melodramatic, it was still a very amazing book. And even Abraham Lincoln credited her with causing the Civil War, basically. There are controversial works available. And I almost hesitate to say this because people are so censorious these days. But I've been hearing about a work called The International Jew, written by Henry Ford, of all people. A bunch of essays and that he had compiled, and they had that. And I got to read it for myself. I wasn't particularly impressed, especially because Ford believed that the Protocols of, elders, of the Elders of Zion were real, which I think is ludicrous. Nonetheless, I was able to read it for myself and decide for myself, rather than having somebody say, you can't read this because this offends some group. And this isn't the only controversial work I've read from Gutenberg, but it's probably the most controversial. So, there are a number of other internet archival sites, but Gutenberg is far and away my favorite, and, uh, and here are the reasons. Number one, it's completely free. Sustained by donations on the site, it tells you how to donate, and volunteers who transcribe the works. Number two, they have everything is in popular ebook formats, you know, such as EPUB and Mobi and so on. At least the old formats that were actually legible, unlike these crazy, weird encrypted things that Amazon is pushing on us nowadays. So you can download these, you can put them in an ebook reader. And you can search them, you can listen to them. And again, that's how I got through all these books. Third reason is because they carry controversial works, many of which Amazon no longer carries. Amazon is very, very susceptible to demands for censorship. Here are the cons, and there, there are a few. Number one, Gutenberg's search is terrible. <laughs> it is really bad. You can enter stuff and you will get either no results or hundreds, and you don't know how many, you just have to page through, and they're not in any particular order, and some seem to be fairly unrelated. And you have to really look to find things. 
I was re double checking to see that the Henry Ford work was still on there, that they hadn't bowed to censorship demands. And it was, but I had to search for it exactly. Uh, second, this file naming scheme is rather crummy. Uh, they're all named like PG with a long number. File names can be very long nowadays, so they could easily incorporate the author's name and at least part of the title into the file name, but they don't. So it's a minor inconvenience. You have to rename the files to make them useful. Third, some significant public domain works are not there. I don't know if it's lack of resources or priorities or what. For example, I was recently looking for a copy of the Schofield Reference Bible, which is King James, but it's got all these annotations by this uh, 1800s preacher, Cyrus Schofield, who believed in all these end times prophecies. That's where all this stuff comes from. All that comes from him. You know, people like Hal, Hal Lindsey and stuff. And because of its historical and political significance, I wanted a copy of this ebook, but Gutenberg doesn't have it. All things considered, Gutenberg is a very worthy cause. If it were a work of fiction, I would give it 4.5 out of 5 gears. I would rate it way above Wikipedia <laughs> for its dedication to free speech, which Wikipedia doesn't necessarily have. This has been my brief show on my favorite internet nonprofit, Project Gutenberg. Hope you liked it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. This helps us get out the good steampunk word and also talk about worthy things like Gutenberg. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.